bronze by gold, heard the hoof irons, steely ringing. Impertinent impertinent. Chips, picking chips off rocky thumbnail. Chips. Horrid. And gold flushed more. A husky fife note blew. Blue. Blue bloom is on the... Gold pinnacled hair. A jumping rose on satiny breasts of satin. Rose of Castile. Trilling. Trilling. I Dolores. Peep. Who's in the peep of gold? Tink cried to bronze in pity. And a call, pure, long and throbbing, long in dying call. Decoy, soft word. But look, the bright stars fade. O oh, rose, notes chirruping answer. Castile, the morn is breaking. Jingle, jingle, jolty, jingling. Coin rang, clock clacked. A vowel, sunny. I could, rebound of garter, not leave thee. Smack, la cloche. Thigh smack, a vowel, warm, sweetheart, goodbye. Jingle, blue, boomed, crashing chords. When love absorbs, war, war, the tympanum. A sail, a veil, a wave upon the waves, lost, throstle fluted, all is lost now. Horn, haw horn. When first he saw, alas, full tap. Full throb. Warbling. Ah, lure. Alluring. Martha, come. Clap-clop. Clip-clap. Clappy-clap. Good God, he never heard in all. Deaf bald pat brought pad. Knife took up. A moonlight night call. Far, far. I feel so sad. P.S. So lonely blooming. Listen. The spiked and winding cold sea horn. Have you the each and for other plash and silent roar? Pearls when she lists rhapsodies. Hiss. You don't. Did not. No, no. Believe. Lid, lid. With a cock. With a cara. Black. Deep sounding. You bend, do. Wait while you wait. He he. Wait while you he. But wait. Low in dark middle earth, embedded ore. Namini, damini. All gone, all fallen. Tiny, her tremulous fern foils of maiden hair. Amen! He gnashed in fury. Fro, to fro. A baton, cool protruding. Bronze Lydia by Mina Gold. By bronze, by gold, in ocean green of shadow. Bloom, old bloom. One rapped, one tapped, with a cara, with a cock. Pray for him, pray, good people. His gouty fingers knackering. Big Benaben, big Ben Ben. Last rose, Castile, of summer left bloom. I feel so sad, alone. Pui, little wind piped, we. True men, lid, cur, cow, de, and doll. Aye, aye, like you men. We'll lift your chink with chunk. Ooh. Where bronze from anear? Where gold from afar? Where hoofs? Rp. Cra. Crandl. Then, not till then, my epitaph be writ. Done. Begin. Bronze by gold. Miss Deuce's head by Miss Kennedy's head. Over the cross-blind of the almond bar, heard the vice-regal hoofs go by, ringing steel. Is that her? asked Miss Kennedy. Miss Deuce said yes, sitting with his ex, Pearl Grey and Old O'Neill. Exquisite contrast, Miss Kennedy said, when all agog Miss Deuce said eagerly, Look at the fellow in the tall silk. Who? Where? Gold asked more eagerly. In the second carriage. Miss Deuce's wet lips said, laughing in the sun. He's looking. Mine till I see. She darted, bronze, to the backmost corner, flattening her face against the pane in a halo of hurried breath. Her wet lips tittered. He's killed looking back. She laughed. Oh, wet. <laughs> Aren't men frightful idiots? With sadness, Miss Kennedy sauntered sadly from bright light, twining a loose hair behind an ear. Sauntering sadly, gold no more, she twisted, twined a hair, 
Sadly, she twined in sauntering, gold hair behind a curving ear. It's them has the fine times. Sadly, then she said. A man. Blue who went by. By Mulang's pipes, bearing in his breast the sweets of sin. By wine's antiques in memory, bearing sweet, sinful words. By Carol's dusky, battered plate. For Raoul. The boots to them, them in the bar, them barmaids came. For them, unheeding him, he banged on the counter his tray of chattering china, and... There's your keys, he said. Miss Kennedy, with manners, transposed the tea tray down to an upturned lithia crate, safe from eyes, low. What is this? Loud boots unmannerly asked. Find out. Miss Deuce retorted, leaving her spying point. Your ball, is it? A haughty bronze replied. I'll complain to Mrs. DeMassey on you if I hear any more of your impertinent insolence. Impertinent insolence. Bootsnout sniffed rudely as he retreated, as she threatened, as he had come. Bloom. On her flower, frowning, Miss Deuce said, Most aggravating that young brat is. If he doesn't conduct himself, I'll wring his ear for him a yard long. Ladylike, in exquisite contrast. Take no notice. Miss Kennedy rejoined. She poured in a teacup tea, then back in the teapot tea. They cowered under their reef of counter, waiting on footstools, crates upturned, waiting for their teas to draw. They poured their blouses, both of black satin, two and nine a yard, waiting for their teas to draw, and two and seven. Yes, bronze from a near, by gold from afar, heard steel from a near, hoofs ring from afar, and heard steel hoofs, ring hoof, ring steel. Am I awfully sunburnt? Miss Bronze unbloused her neck. No, said Miss Kennedy. It gets brown after. Did you try the borax with the cherry laurel water? Miss Deuce half stood to see her skin askance in the bar mirror, gilded lettered, where hock and claret glasses shimmered, and in their midst a shell. And leave it to my hands, she said. Try it with the glycerine, Miss Kennedy advised. Bidding her neck and hands adieu, Miss Deuce... Those things only bring out a rash, replied, reseated. I asked that old fogey and Boyd's for something for my skin. Miss Kennedy, pouring now full-drawn tea, grimaced and prayed... Oh, don't remind me of him for mercy's sake. But wait till I tell you... Miss Deuce entreated. Sweet tea, Miss Kennedy, having poured with milk, plugged both two ears with little fingers. No, don't! She cried. I won't listen! She cried. But whom... Miss Deuce grunted in snuffy, fogey's tone. For your what? says he. Miss Kennedy unplugged her ears to hear, to speak, but said, but prayed again. Don't let me think of Maralic Spire, the hideous old wretch, that night in the ancient concert rooms. She sipped distastefully her brew, hot tea, a sip, sipped sweet tea. Here he was, Miss Deuce said, cocking her bronze head three quarters, ruffling her nose wings. Shrill shriek of laughter sprang from Miss Kennedy's throat. Miss Deuce huffed and snorted down her nostrils that quivered impertinent like a shout in quest. Shrieking, Miss Kennedy cried, You ever forget his goggle eyes? Miss Deuce chimed in in deep bronze laughter, shouting, And your other eye? Blue who's dark eye read Aaron Figatner's name. Why do I always think fig gather? Gathering figs, I think. And Prosper Lore's Huguenot name. By Bassie's Blessed Virgins, Bloom's dark eyes went by. Blue robed, white under, come to me. God, they believe she is, or goddess. Those today I could not see. That fellow spoke, a student. After with Dedalus' son. He might be Mulligan. All comely virgins. That brings those rakes of fellows in. How white. By went his eyes. The sweets of sin. Sweet are the sweets of sin. In a giggling peal, young, gold-bronze voices blended. Deuce with Kennedy, your other eye. They threw young heads back, bronze, giggle gold, to let free fly their laughter, screaming, your other, signals to each other, high, piercing notes. Ah, panting, sighing, sighing, ah, foredone their mirth died down. Miss Kennedy lipped her cup again, raised, drank a sip, and giggle giggled. <laughs> Miss Deuce, bending again over the tea tray, ruffled again her nose and rolled, droll, fattened eyes. Again, Kenny giggles, stooping her fair pinnacles of hair, stooping, her tortoise nape comb showed, spluttered out of her mouth her tea, choking in tea and laughter, coughing with choking, crying. Oh, crazy eyes! Imagine being married to a man like that! 
she cried. <laughs> it's bitter beard. Deuce gave full vent to a splendid yell, a full yell of full woman. Delight, joy, indignation. <laughs> Married to the greasy nose, she yelled. Shrill with deep laughter after bronze and gold. They urged each, each to peal after peal, ringing in changes. Bronze, gold, gold, bronze, shrill, deep, to laughter after laughter, and then laughed more. Greasy, I know, exhausted, breathless. Their shaken heads they laid, braided and pinnacled by glossy combed against the counter ledge. All flushed, panting, sweating, all breathless. Married to Bloom, to Greasy Sabloom. Saints above, Miss Dew said, sighed above her jumping rose. I wished I hadn't laughed so much. I feel all wet. Oh, Miss Dew! Miss Kennedy protested. You are a thing. And flushed yet more. You are it. More goldenly. By Cantwell's offices, roved Greaser Bloom, by Cheppy's virgins, bright of their oils. Nanetti's father hawked those things about, wheedling at doors as I. Religion pays. Must see him about Keys Pa. Eat first, I want. Not yet. At four, she said. Time ever passing, clock hands turning on. Where eat? The Clarence Dolphin? On. For Raoul. Eat. If I net five guineas with those ads, the violet silk petticoats. Not yet. The sweets of sin. Flushed less, still less, goldenly paled. Into their bar strolled Mr. Dedalus. Chips, picking chips off one of his rocky thumbnails. Chips. He strolled. Oh, welcome back, Miss Deuce. He held her hand. Enjoyed her holidays. Tip top. He hoped she had nice weather in Ross Trevor. Gorgeous. She said. Look at the holy show I am, lying out on the strand all day. Bronze whiteness. That was exceedingly naughty of you, Mr. Dedalus told her and pressed her hand indulgently. Tempting poor simple males. Miss Deuce of Satin deuced her arm away. Oh, go away, she said. You're very simple, I don't think. He was. Well, now I am, he mused. I looked so simple in the cradle, they christened me Simple Simon. You must have been a doozy, Miss Deuce made answer. And what did the doctor order today? Well, now, he mused, whatever you say yourself, I think I'll trouble you for some fresh water and a half glass of whiskey. Jingle. With the greatest alacrity, Miss Deuce agreed. With grace of alacrity, towards the mirror, gilt, cantrell and cochrane's, she turned herself. With grace, she tapped a measure of gold whiskey from her crystal keg. Forth from the skirt of his coat, Mr. Dedalus brought pouch and pipe. Alacrity she served. He blew through the flue two husky fife notes. By Jove, he mused. I often wanted to see the Morden Mountains. Must be a great tonic in the air down there. But a long frightening comes at last, they say. Yes, yes. Yes. He fingered shreds of hair, her maiden hair, her mermaids, into the bowl. Chips, shreds, musing, mute. None not said nothing. Yes. Gaily, Miss Deuce polished a tumbler, trilling. Oh, Idolores, queen of the eastern seas. Was Mr. Lidwell in today? In came Lenehan. Round him peered Lenehan. Mr. Bloom reached Essex Bridge. Yes, Mr. Bloom crossed Bridge of Essex. To Martha I must write. By paper, dailies. Girl there, Sybil. Bloom, old Bloom, blue Bloom is on the rye. He was in at lunchtime, Miss Deuce said. Lenehan came forward. Was Mr. Boylan looking for me? He asked. She answered. Miss Kennedy, was Mr. Boylan in while I was upstairs? She asked. Miss Voice of Kennedy answered, a second teacup poised, her gaze upon a page. No, he was not. Miss Gaze of Kennedy, heard not seen, read on. Lenehan round the sandwich bell wound his round body round. Peep! Who's in the corner? No glance of Kennedy rewarding him, he yet made overtures. To mind her stops, to read only the black ones, round O and crooked S. Jingle, jaunty jingle. Girl gold, she read, and did not glance, take no notice. 
She took no notice, while he read by rote a solfa fable for her, plappering flatly. A fox met a stork, said the fox to the stork, Will you put your bill down in my throat and pull up a bone? He droned in vain. Miss Deuce turned to her tea aside. He sighed aside. Ah, oh, me. Oh, my. He greeted Mr. Dedalus and got a nod. Greetings from the famous son of a famous father. Who may he be? Mr. Dedalus asked. Lenehan opened most genial arms. Who? Who may he be? He asked. Can you ask? Stephen, the youthful bard. Dry. Mr. Dedalus, famous father, laid by his dry, filled pipe. I see, he said. I didn't recognize him for the moment. I hear he's keeping very select company. Have you seen him lately? He had. I quaffed the nectar bowl with him this very day, said Lenham. In Mooney's Enville and in Mooney's Sumer, he had received the rhino for the labor of his muse. He smiled at Bronze's tea-bathed lips, at listening lips and eyes. The elite of Aaron hung upon his lips. The ponderous pundit Hugh McHugh, Dublin's most brilliant scribe and editor and that minstrel boy of the wild, wet west, who is known by the euphonious appellation of the O'Madden Burke. After an interval, Mr. Dedalus raised his grog and... That must have been highly diverting, said he. I see. He see. He drank. With faraway morning mountain eye. Set down his glass. He looked towards the saloon door. I see you've moved the piano. The tuner was in today, Miss Deuce replied, tuning it for the smoking concert, and I never heard such an exquisite player. Is that a fact? Didn't he, Miss Kennedy? The real classical, you know, and blind too, poor fellow. Not twenty, I'm sure he was. Is that a fact? Mr. Dedalus said. He drank and strayed away. So sad to look at his face, Miss Deuce condoled. God's coarse son bitches bastard. Tink, to her pity, cried a diner's bell. To the door of the dining room came bald Pat, came bothered Pat, came Pat, waiter of Ormond. Lager for diner. Lager without alacrity she served. With patience Lenehan waited for Boylan, with impatience, for jingle jaunty blazer's boy. Upholding the lid, he, who, gazed in the coffin. Coffin? At the oblique, triple piano wires. He pressed, the same who pressed indulgently her hand, soft pedalling a triple of keys to see the thicknesses of felt advancing, to hear the muffled hammer fall in action. Two sheets, cream vellum paper, one reserve, two envelopes. When I was in Wisdom Healy's. Wise bloom in dailies, Henry Flower bought. Are you not happy in your home? Flower to console me. And a pin cuts la. Means something. Language of flower. Was it a daisy? Innocence, that is. Respectable girl meet after mass. Thanks awfully muchly. Wise Bloom eyed on the door a poster. A swaying mermaid smoking mid nice waves. Smoke mermaids, coolest whiff of all. Hair streaming, love lorn for some man. For Raoul. He eyed and saw afar on Essex Bridge a gay hat riding on a jaunting car. It is. Third time. Coincidence. Jingling on supper robbers, it jaunted from the bridge to Ormond Quay. Follow. Risk it. Go quick. At four. Near now. Out. Tubin, sir. The shop girl dared to say. Ah, uh, I was forgetting. Excuse. And four. At four, she. Winsomely she on blue him whom smiled. Blue smile, queer go. Turn noon. Think you're the only pebble on the beach. Does that to all. For men. In drowsy silence, gold bent on her page. From the saloon a call came. Long in dying. That was a tuning fork the tuner had that he forgot. That he now struck. A call again. That he now poised. That it now throbbed. You hear? It throbbed pure, purer, softly and softlier, its buzzing prongs. Longer in dying coal. Pat paid for Dinah's pop-corked bottle. 
and over tumbler, tray, and pop-coked bottle, ere he went, he whispered, bald and bothered, with Miss Deuce. The bright stars fade. A voiceless song sang from within, singing, The morn is breaking. A duodene of bird notes chirruped bright treble answer under sensitive hands. Brightly the keys, all twinkling, linked, all harps according, called to a voice to sing the strain of dewy morn, of youth, of love's leave-taking, life's love's morn, the dewdrop's pearl. Lenehan's lips over the counter lisped a low whistle of decoy. But look this way, he said. Rose of Castile. Jingle jaunted by the curb and stopped. She rose and closed her reading, Rose of Castile. Fretted forlorn, dreamily rose. Did she fall, or was she pushed, he asked her. She answered, slighting. Ask no questions, and you'll hear no lies. Like lady, ladylike. Blazes Boylan's smart tan shoes creaked on the bar floor where he strode. Yes, gold from a near, by bronze from afar. Lenehan heard, and knew, and hailed him. See, the conquering hero comes! Between the car and window, warily walking, went Bloom, unconquered hero. See me, he might. The seat he sat on, warm. Black, wary he-cat, walked towards Richie Goulding's legal bag, lifted aloft, saluting. And I from thee. I heard you were round, said Blazes Boylan. He touched to fair Miss Kennedy a rim of his slanted straw. She smiled on him. But Sister Bronze outsmiled her, preening for him her richer hair, a bosom and a rose. Boylan bespoke potions. What's your cry? Glass of bitter. Glass of bitter, please, and a slow gin for me. Wire in yet? Not yet. At four, he... All said four. Cowley's red lugs and Adam's apple in the door of the sheriff's office. Avoid. Goulding a chance. What is he doing in the Ormond? Car waiting. Wait. Hello. Where off to? Something to eat? I too was just... In here? What? Ormond? Best value in Dublin. Is that so? Dining room. Sit tight there. See, not be seen. I think I'll join you. Come on. Richie led on. Bloom followed bag. Dinner fit for the prince. Miss Deuce reached high to take a flagon, stretching her satin arm, her bust that all but burst so high. Oh, oh. Jerked Lenehan, gasping at each stretch. Oh. But easily she seized her prey and led it low in triumph. Why don't you grow? Asked Blazes Boylan. She bronze, dealing from her jar thick, syrupy liquor for his lips, looked as it flowed. Flower in his coat. Who gave him? And syruped with her voice. Fine goods in small parcels. That is to say, she. Neatly she poured, slow, syrupy, slow. Here's fortune, Blazer said. He pitched a broad coin down. Coin rang. Hold on, said Anahan. Till I... Ah... Fortune, he wished, lifting his bubbled ale. Scepter will win in a canter, he said. I plunged a bit, said Boylan, winking and drinking. Not on my own, you know. Fancy of a friend of mine. Lenehan still drank and grinned at his tilted ale and at Miss Deuce's lips that all but hummed, not shut. The ocean song her lips had trilled, by Dolores, the eastern seas. The clock whirred. Miss Kennedy passed their way. Love. Wonder who gave. Bearing away tea tray. Clock clacked. Miss Deuce took Boylan's coin, struck boldly the cash register. It clanged. Clock clacked. Fair one of Egypt teased and sorted in the till and hummed and handed coins in change. Look to the west. A clack for me. What time is that? Asked Blazes Boylan. Four? O'clock. Lenehan... Small eyes a hunger on her humming, bust a humming, tugged Blazes Boylan's elbow sleeve. Let's hear the time, he said. The bag of Goulding, Collis, Ward, led Bloom by Rye Bloom flowered tables. Aimless he chose, with agitated aim, bald Pat attending, a table near the door. 
been near. At four. Has he forgotten? Perhaps a trick. Not come, wet appetite. I couldn't do. Wait. Wait. Pat, waiter, waited. Sparkling bronze, azure-eyed, blazers, sky-blue bow and eyes. Go on. Pressed Lenehan. There's no one. He never heard. To Flora's lips did high. High, a high note pealed in the treble, clear. Bronze Deuce, communing with her rose that sank and rose, sought Blazer's Boylan's flower and eyes. Please, please. He pleaded over returning phrases of avowal. I could not leave thee. Afterwards. Miss Deuce promised coyly. No, no. Urged Lenehan. Sonny Lecloche. Oh, do. There's no one. She looked quick. Miss Ken out of earshot. Sudden bent. Two kindling faces watched her bend. Quavering, the chords strayed from the air, found it again, lost chord, and lost and found it faltering. Go on, do, Sonny. Bending, she nipped a peak of skirt above her knee, delayed, taunted them still, bending, suspending, with willful eyes. Sonny. Smack. She let free, sudden, in rebound, her nipped elastic garter smack warm against her smackable woman's warm hose tie. La cloche! cried gleeful Lenehan. Trained by owner. No sawdust there. She smile smirked, supercilious. Wept. Aren't men? But lightward gliding, mild, she smiled on Boylan. You're the essence of vulgarity. She, in gliding, said. Boylan eyed, eyed. Tossed to fat lips his chalice, drank off his tiny chalice, sucking the last fat violet syrupy drops. He, spellbound eyes, went after her gliding head as it went down the bar by mirrors, gilded arch for ginger ale, hock and carrot glasses shimmering, a spiky shell where it concerted, mirrored, bronze with sunnier bronze. Yes, bronze from a nearby. Sweetheart, goodbye. I'm off, said Boylan with impatience. He slid his chalice brisk away, grasped his change. Wait a shake, begged Lenehan, drinking quickly. I wanted to tell you, Tom Rochford. Come on to Blazes, said Blazes Boylan, going. Lenehan gulped to go. Got the horn or what, he said. Uh, wait, I'm coming. He followed the hasty creaking shoes, but stood by nimbly by the threshold, saluting forms, a bulky with a slender. How do you do, Mr. Dollard? Uh, how do, how do? Ben Dollard's vague bass answered, turning an instant from Father Cowley's woe. He won't give you any trouble, Bob. Alf Bergen will speak to the long fellow. We'll put a barley straw on that Judas Iscariot's ear this time. Sighing, Mr. Dedalus came through the saloon, a finger soothing an eyelid. Oh, we will. Ben Dollard yodeled jollily. Come on, Simon, give us a ditty. We heard the piano. Bull Pat, bothered waiter, waited for drink orders. Power for Richie. And Bloom... Let me see. Not make him walk twice. His corns. Four now. How warm this black is. Coarse nerves a bit. Refracts, is it? Heat. Let me see. Cider. Yes, bottle of cider. What's that? Mr. Dedalus said. I was only vamping, man. Come on, come on. Ben Dollard called. Be gone, dull care. Come, Bob. He ambled Dollard, bulky slops, before them. Hold that fellow with her. Hold him now. Into the saloon. He plumped him, Dollard, on the stool. His gouty paws plumped cords. Plumped, stopped, abrupt. Bald Pat in the doorway met tealess gold returning. Bothered, he wanted power and cider. Bronze by the window watched. Bronze from afar. Jingle a tinkle jaunted. Bloom heard a jing, a little sound. He's off. Light sob of breath, Bloom sighed on the silent blue-hued flowers. Jingling. He's gone. Jingle. Here. Love and war, Ben, Mr. Dedalus said. God be with old times. Miss Deuce's brave eyes, unregarded, turned from the cross-blind, smitten by sunlight. Gone. Pensive. Who knows? Smitten. The smiting light. She lowered the drop-blind with a sliding cord. She drew down, pensive... Why did he go so quick when I... About her bronze over the bar, where Ball stood by Sister Gold. Inexquisite contrast. Contrast, inexquisite, non-exquisite. 
slow, cool, dim, sea green, sliding depth of shadow, Oda Neil. Poor old Goodwin was the pianist that night, Father Cowley reminded them. There was a slight difference of opinion between himself and the collared grand. There was. A symposium all his own, Mr. Dedalus said. The devil wouldn't stop him. He was a crotchety old fellow in the primary stage of drink. God, do you remember? Ben Bulky Dollar said, turning from the punished keyboard. And by japers, I had no wedding garment. <laughs> <laughs> they laughed, all three. He had no wed. All trio laughed, no wedding garment. Our friend Bloom turned in handy that night, Mr. Dedalus said. Where's my pipe, by the way? He wandered back to the bar to the lost cord pipe. Bald Pat carried two diner's drinks, Richie and Puldy, and Father Cowley laughed again. I saved the situation, Ben, I think. You did? Averred Ben Dollard. I remember those tight trousers, too. That was a brilliant idea, Bob. Father Cowley blushed to his brilliant purpley lobes. He saved the situation. Tight trousers. Brilliant idea. I knew he was on the rocks, he said. The wife was playing the piano in the coffee palace on Saturdays for a very trifling consideration. And who was it gave me the wheeze she was doing the other business? Do you remember? We had to search all Hollis Street to find them till the chap in Kyo's gave us the number, remember? Ben remembered, his broad visage wondering. By God, she had some luxurious opera cloaks and things there. Mr. Dedalus wandered back, pipe in hand. Marion Square style, ball dresses by God and court dresses. He wouldn't take any money either, what? Any God's quantity of cocked hats and boleros and trunk hose, what? Aye, aye. Mr. Dedalus nodded. Mrs. Marion Bloom has left off clothes of all descriptions. Jingle jaunted down the keys, blazes sprawled on bounding tires. Liver and bacon, steak and kidney pie. Right, sir. Right, Pat. Mrs. Marion met him pike hoses. Smell of burn, of Paul de Cock. Nice name he. What's this her name was? A buxom lassie. Marion... Tweedy. Yes. Is she alive? And kicking. She was a daughter of... Daughter of the regiment. Yes, be gad, I remember the old drum major. Mr. Dedalus struck, whizzed, lit, puffed, savoury puff after. Irish? I don't know, Faith. Is she, Simon? Puff after stiff, a puff, strong, savoury, crackling. Books and age of muscle is... What? Bit rusty. Oh, she is my Irish Molly, oh. He puffed a pungent, plumy blast. From the rock of Gibraltar, all the way. They pined in depth of ocean shadow, gold by the beer pool, bronze by Maraschino, thoughtful all too. Mina Kennedy, four Lismore Terrace drum condra, with I Dolores, a queen, Dolores, silent. Pat served uncovered dishes, Leopold cut liver slices. As said before, he ate with relish the inner organs, nutty gizzards, fried cods rose, while Richie Goulding, Collis, Ward, ate steak and kidney. Steak, then kidney. Bite by bite of pie he ate, Bloom ate, they ate. Bloom with Goulding, married, in silence, ate. Dinners fit for princes. By bachelor's walk, jog jaunty jingled blazes boiling. Bachelor, in sun, in heat, mare's glossy rumper trot with flick of whip on bounding tires, sprawled, warm seated, boiling impatience, ardent bold, horn. Have you the horn? Have you the ha ha horn? Over their voices, dollard bassooned attack, booming over bombarding chords. <laughs> When love absorbs my ardent soul. Roll of Ben Soul Benjamin, roll to the quivery, love shivery roof panes. War! War! cried Father Cowley. You're the warrior! So I am! Ben Warrior <laughs> laughed. I was thinking of your landlord, love or money. He stopped. He wagged huge beard, huge face over his blunder, huge. Sure you'd bust the tin for him for a year, man, Mr. Dedalus said through smoke aroma. With an organ like yours? In bearded, abundant <laughs> laughter, Dollard shook upon the keyboard. He would. Not to mention another membrane? Father Cowley added. Half time, Ben. I'm a also man on troppo. Let me there. Miss Kennedy served two gentlemen with tankards of cool stout. She passed a remark. It was indeed, first gentleman said, beautiful weather. They drank cool stout. Did she know where the Lord Lieutenant was going? 
and heard steel hoofs ring hoof ring. No, she couldn't say. But it would be in the paper. Oh, she needn't trouble. No trouble. She waved about her outspread independent, searching. The Lord Lieutenant. Her pinnacles of hair slow moving. Lord Lieutenant. Too much trouble, first gentleman said. Oh, not in the least. Way he looked at. Lord Lieutenant. Gold by bronze heard iron, steel. My ardent soul, I care not for or the morrow. In liver gravy, bloom mashed, mashed potatoes. Love and war, someone is. Ben Dollard's famous. Night he ran round to us to borrow a dress suit for that concert. Trousers tight as a drum on him. Musical porkers. Molly did laugh when he went out. Threw herself back across the bed, screaming, kicking, with all his belongings on show. Oh, saints above, I'm drenched. Oh, the women in the front row. Oh, I never laughed so many. Well, of course, that's what gives him the bass barrel tone. For instance, eunuchs. Wonder who's playing. Nice touch. Must be Cowley, musical. Knows whatever note you play. Bad breath he has, poor chap. Stopped. Miss Deuce, engaging, Lydia Deuce, bowed to suave solicitor George Lidwell, gentleman, entering. Good afternoon. She gave her moist, a lady's hand to his firm clasp. Afternoon. Yes, she was back. To the old ding-dong again. Your friends are inside, Mr. Lidwell. George Lidwell, suave, solicited, held a Lydia hand. Blue live, as said before. Clean here, at least. That chap in the burden. Gummy with grizzle. No one here. Goulding and I. Clean tables, flowers, mitres of napkins. Pat, to and fro, bald pat. Nothing to do. Best value in dub. Piano again. Cowley it is. Where he sits into it like one to gather mutual understanding. Tiresome shaper scraping fiddles, eye on the bow end, sawing the cello, remind you of toothache. A high long snore, night we were in the box, trombone under, blowing like a grampus, between the acts, other brass chap unscrewing, emptying spittle. Conductor's legs too, bags trousers, jiggity jiggity. Do right to hide them. Jiggity jingle jaunty jaunty. Only the harp. Lovely, gold, glowering light. Girl touched it. Poop of a lovely. Gravy's rather good, fit for a... Golden ship. Erin. The harp that once or twice. Cool hands. Ben Hoth, the rhododendrons. We are their harps. I. He... Old, young. Ah, I couldn't, man, Mr. Dedalus said, shy, listless. Strongly. Go on, blast you, Ben Dollard growled. Get it out in bits. Ma parry, Simon, Father Cowley said. Downstage he strode some paces, grave, tall in affliction, his long arms outheld. Hoarsely the apple of his throat, hoarsed softly. Softly he sang to a dusty seascape there, a last farewell. A headland, a ship, a sail upon the billows. Farewell. A lovely girl, her veil a wave upon the wind, upon the headland, wind around her. Cowley sang. Ma pari tu d'amor, il mio sguardo l'incontro. She waved, on hearing Cowley, her veil to one departing. Dear one. To wind, love, speeding sail, return. Go on, Simon. Ah, sure, my dancing days are done, Ben. Well, Mr. Dedalus laid his pipe to rest beside the tuning fork and, sitting, touched the obedient keys. No, Simon. Father Cowley turned. Play it in the original, one flat. The keys, obedient, rose higher, told, faltered, confessed, confused. Upstage strode Father Cowley. Here, Simon, I'll accompany you. He said. Get up. By Graham Lemon's pineapple rock, by Elvery's elephant jingle jogged. Steak, 
kidney, liver, mashed, at meat fit for princes, sat princes Bloom and Goulding. Princes at meat, they raised and drank power and cider. Most beautiful tenor air ever written, Richie said. Sonambula. He heard Joe Mass sing that one night. Ah, that McGuckin. Yes, in his way. Choir boy style. Maz was the boy. Mass boy. A lyrical tenor, if you like. Never forget it. Never. Tenderly, Bloom, over liverless bacon, saw the tightened features strain. Back achey. Bright, bright eye, next item on the program. Paying the piper. Pills. Pounded bread. Wet a guinea a box. Stave it off a while. Sings to Down Among the Dead Men. Appropriate. Kidney pie. Sweets to the... Not making much hand of it. Best value in. Characteristic of him. Power. Particular about his drink. Flaw in the glass. Fresh vartry water. Fecking matches from counters to save, then squander a sovereign in dribs and drabs, and when he's wanted, not a farthing. Screwed, refusing to pay his fare. Curious types. Never would Richie forget that night. As long as he lived, never. In the gods of the old royal, with little peak. And when the first note, speech paused on Richie's lips. Coming out with a whopper now. Rhapsodies about damn all. Believes his own lies. Does really. Wonderful liar. But want a good memory. Which air is that? Asked Leopold Bloom. All is lost now. Richie cocked his lips apart. A low, incipient note. Sweet, banshee, murmured. All. A thrush. Throstle. His breath, bird sweet. Good teeth he's proud of. Fluted with plaintive woe. Is lost Rich sound. Two notes in one there. Blackbird I heard in the Hawthorn Valley. Taking my motives, he twined and turned them. All, most two, new call is lost in all. Echo. How sweet the answer. How is that done? All lost now. Mournful he whistled. Fall, surrender. Lost. Bloom bent Leopold here, turning a fringe of doily down under the vase. Order. Yes, I remember. Lovely air. In sleep she went to him. Innocence in the moon. Still, hold her back. Brave. Don't know their danger. Call name. Touch water. Jingle jolt. Too late. She longed to go. That's why. Woman, as easy stop the sea. Yes, all is lost. A beautiful air, said Bloom, lost Leopold. I know it well. Never in all his life had Richie Goulding... He knows it well, too, or he feels, still harping on his daughter. Wise child that knows her father, Dedalus said. Me? Bloom askance over Livellus saw face of the all is lost. Rollicking Richie once. Jokes, old, stale now. Wagging his ear. Napkin ring in his eye. Now begging letters he sends his son with. Cross-eyed Walter. Sir, I did, sir. Wouldn't trouble, only I was expecting some money. Apologize. Piano again. Sounds better than last time I heard. Tuned, probably. Stopped again. Dollard and Cowley still urge the lingering singer out with it. With it, Simon. It's Simon. Ladies and gentlemen, I am most deeply obliged by your kind solicitation. It's Simon. I have no money, but if you will lend me your attention, I shall endeavour to sing to you of a heart bowed down. By the sandwich bell, in screening shadow, Lydia, her bronze and rose, a lady's grace, gave and withheld, as in cool glaucous Odenil Mina, to tankards too, her pinnacles of gold. The harping chords of prelude closed. A chord, long drawn, expectant, drew a voice away. Well, first I 
Richie turned. So Dedalus' voice, he said. Brain tipped, cheek touched with flame, they listened, feeling that flow, endearing flow over skin, limbs, human heart, soul, spine. Bloom signed to Pat. Bald Pat is a waiter hard of hearing. To set ajar the door of the bar. The door of the bar. So, that will do. Pat, waiter, waited, waiting to hear, for he was hard of hear by the door. Through the hush of air a voice sang to them, low, not rain, not leaves in murmur, like no voice of strings, of reeds, or what you call them, dulcimers, touching their still ears with words, still hearts of their, each his remembered lives, good, good to hear. Sorrow from the meat seemed to, from both depart, when first they heard, when first they saw, lost, Richie, Poldy, mercy of beauty, heard from, a person wouldn't expect it in the least, her first merciful love-soft, oft-loved word. Love, that is, singing, love's old, sweet song. Bloom unwound slowly the elastic band of his packet, love's old, sweet, sunny la gold. Bloom wound a skein round four fork fingers, stretched it, relaxed, and wound it round his troubled, double, fourfold, in octave, jived them fast. Tenors, get women by the score, increase their flow, throw flower at his feet. When will we meet? My head, it simply jingle all delighted. He can't sing for tall hats. Your head, it simply swirls. Perfumed for him. What perfume does your wife? I want to know. Jing, stop, knock, last look at mirror always before she answers the door, the hall. There? How do you? I do well. There? What? Or? File of cashews, kissing comforts in her satchel. Yes? Hands felt for the opulent. Alas, the voice rose, sighing, changed, loud, full, shining, proud. Glorious tone he has still. Cork air, softer. Also their brogue. Silly man. Could have made oceans of money singing wrong words. Wore out his wife, now sings. But hard to tell, only the two themselves. If he doesn't break down, keep a trot for the avenue. His hands and feet sing too. Drink. Nerves overstrung. Must be abstemious to sing. Jenny Lind soup, stock, sage, raw eggs, half a pint of cream, for creamy, dreamy. Tenderness it well, slow, swelling, full it throbbed. That's the chat. Ha, ah, give, take. Throb, a throb, a pulsing, proud, erect. Words? Music? No, it's what's behind. Bloom looped, unlooped, noded. Disnoted, bloom, flood of warm, jim-jam, lick it up, secretness, flowed to flow in, music out, in desire, dark to lick, flow, invading, tipping her, tipping her, tapping her, topping her, tap, pause to dilate, dilating, tap, the joy, the feel, the warm, the tap, to pour o'er sluices, pouring gushes, flood, gush, flow, joy gush, tap, throp, now, language of love. Beaming. Lydia for Lidwell, squeak, scarcely hear, so ladylike the muse, unsqueaked, a ray of hope. Martha it is. Coincidence, just going to write. Lionel song. Lovely name you have. Can't write. Accept my little press. Play on our heartstrings, purse strings too. She's a... I called you naughty boy. Still, the name Martha, how strange. Today. The voice of Lionel returned, weaker but unwearied. It sang again to Richie, Poldy, Lydia, Lidwell. Also sang to Pat, open mouth, ear waiting, to wait. 
How first he saw that form endearing, How sorrow seemed to part, How look, form, word charmed him, Good Lidwell, one pet bloom's heart. Wish I could see his face, though. Explain better. Why the barber in Drago's always looked my face when I spoke his face in the glass. Still, hear it better here than in the bar, though farther. First night, when first I saw her at Matt Dillon's in Terenure, yellow, black lace she wore, musical chairs, we two the last, fate, after her, fate, round and round, slow, quick round, we two, all looked, halt, down she sat, all ousted looked, lips laughing, yellow knees, Singing, waiting, she sang. I turned her music, full voice of perfume, of what perfume does your lilac trees. Bosom I saw, both full, throat warbling. First I saw, she thanked me. Why did she me? Fate. Spanishy eyes, under a pear tree alone, patio, this hour in old Madrid, one side in shadow, Dolores, she Dolores, at me. Luring, ah, alluring. Quitting all languor, Lionel cried in grief, in cry of passion dominant to love, to return with deepening yet with rising chords of harmony, in cry of Lionel loneliness that she should know must Martha feel. For only her he waited. Where, here, there, try there, here, all try where, somewhere. Alone, one love, one hope, one comfort me. Martha Chestnote, return. It soared, a bird, it held its flight, a swift, pure cry, soar, silver orb, it leaped, serene, speeding, sustained, to come. Don't spin it out too long. Long breath, he, breath, long life, soaring, high, high, resplendent, a flame, crowned, High in the effulgent, symbolistic, high of the ethereal bosom, high of the high, vast irradiation everywhere, all soaring, all around about the all, the endlessnessnessness. Siopold, consumed, come. Well sung, all clapped. She ought to come to me, to him, to her. You two, me, us. Bravo. Clap, clap. Good man, Simon. Clappy, clap, clap. Encore. Clap, clap, clap. Sound as a bell. Bravo, Simon. Clap, clap, clap. Encore. On clap, said, cried, clapped all. Ben Dollard, Lydia Deuce, George Lidwell, Pat, Mina, two gentlemen with two tankards, Cowley, first gent with tank, and bronze Miss Deuce, and gold Miss Mina. Blazes Boylan's smart tan shoes creaked on the bar floor, said before, Jingle by monuments of Sir John Gray, Horatio One Handle Nelson, Reverend Father Theobald Matthew, jaunted as said before just now, a trot in heat, heat seated, cloche, sonne la, cloche, sonne la, slower the mare went up the hill by the rotunda, Rutland Square, too slow for Boylan, blazes Boylan, impatience Boylan, joggled the mare. An afterclang of Cowley's chords closed died on the air, made richer. And Richie Goulding drank his power, and Leopold Bloom, his cider, drank, did well his Guinness. Second gentleman said they would partake of two tankards, if she did not mind. Miss Kennedy smirked, deserving, coral lips at first, at second. She did not mind. Seven days in jail, Ben Dollard said. On bread and water. Then you'd sing Simon like a garden thrush. <laughs> Lionel Simon, singer, laughed. Father Bob Cowley played... Mina Kennedy served. Second gentleman paid. Tom Kernan strutted in. Lydia admired, admired. But Bloom sang dumb. Admiring. Richie, admiring, descanted on that man's glorious voice. He remembered one night long ago. Never forget that night. So he sang, twas rank and fame. In Ned Lambert's was. Good God, he never heard in all his life a note like that. He never did. 
Then false one we had better part. So clear, so... God he never heard. Since love lives not. A clinking voice. Ask Lambert, he can tell you too. Goulding, a flush struggling in his pale, told Mr. Bloom, face of the night, sigh in Ned Lambert's Dedalus house, sang Twas Rank and Fame. He, Mr. Bloom, listened, while he, Richie Goulding, told him, Mr. Bloom, of the night. He, Richie, heard him, sigh Dedalus, sing Twas Rank and Fame in his Ned Lambert's house. Brothers-in-law, relations, we never speak as we pass by. Rift in the lute, I think. Treats him with scorn, see? He admires him all the more. The night sigh sang. The human voice. Two tiny silky chords. Wonderful, more than all the others. That voice was a lamentation. Calmer now. It's in the silence you feel you hear. Vibrations. Now silent air. Bloom unjived his crisscrossed hands, and with slack fingers plucked the slender catgut thong. He drew and plucked. It buzzed. It twanged. While Goulding talked of Barraclough's voice production, while Tom Kernan, harking back in a retrospective sort of arrangement, talked to listening Father Cowley, who played a voluntary, who nodded as he played, while Big Ben Dollard talked with Simon Dedalus Lighting, who nodded as he smoked, who smoked, Thou lost one. All songs on that theme. Yet more, Bloom stretched his string. Cruel, it seems, that people get fond of each other, lure them on, then tear asunder. Death explodes. Knock on the head. Out the hell out of that. Human life. Dignum. Oh, that rat's tail wriggling. Five bob I gave. Corpus paradisum. Corn Craig Croker, belly like a poison pup. Gone, they sing. Forgotten. I too, and one day she with lever get tired. Suffer then, snivel, big Spanishy eyes goggling at nothing. Her wavy, avy, heavy, 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 heavy hair uncombed. Yet too much happy bores. He stretched more, more. Are you not happy in your... Twang. It snapped. Jingle into Dorset Street. Miss Deuce withdrew her satiny arm, reproachful, pleased. Don't make half so free. Said she. Till we are better acquainted. George Lidwell told her really and truly, but she did not believe. First gentleman told Mina that was so. She asked him, was that so? And second tankard told her so that that was so. Miss Deuce, Miss Lydia, did not believe. Miss Kennedy, Mina, did not believe. George Lidwell, no. Miss Dew, did not. The first, the first gent with the tank, believe. No, no, did not. Miss Ken, Lid Lydia, well, the tank. Better write it here. Quills in the post office chewed and twisted. Bald Pat at a sign drew nigh. A pen and ink, he went. A pad, he went. A pad to blot. He heard, deaf Pat. Yes, Mr. Bloom said, teasing the curling catgut fine. It certainly is. Few lines will do, my present. All that Italian florid music is... Who is this rote? Know the name, you know better. Take out sheet notepaper, envelope, unconcerned. It's so characteristic. Grandest number in the whole opera, Goulding said. It is, Bloom said. Numbers it is. All music, when you come to think. Two multiplied by two divided by half is twice one. Vibrations. Chords, those are. One plus two plus six is seven. Do anything you like with figures juggling. Always find out this equal to that. Symmetry under a symmetry wall. He doesn't see my morning. Callous, all for his own gut. Muse mathematics. And you think you're listening to the ethereal... But suppose you said it like, Martha, seven times nine minus X is thirty-five thousand, fall quite flat. It's on account of the sounds it is. Instance, he's playing now, improvising. Might be what you like till you hear the words. Want to listen, sharp, hard. Begin all right, then hear chords, a bit off, feel lost a bit. In and out of sacks, over barrels, through wire fences, obstacle race. Time makes the tune question of mood you're in. Still, 
Always nice to hear. Except scales up and down, girls learning. Two together, next door neighbours. Ought to invent dummy pianos for that. Bloomin' lead I bought for her. The name. Playing it slow, a girl. Night I came home, the girl. Door of the stables near Cecilia Street. Millie. No taste. Queer, because we both, I mean... Bald, deaf Pat brought quite flat pad. Ink. Pat set with ink, pen, quite flat pad. Pat took plate, dish, knife, fork. Pat went. It was the only language, Mr. Dedalus said to Ben. He heard them as a boy in Ringabella, Crosshaven, Ringabella, singing their Barker Rolls, Queenstown Harbour full of Italian ships, walking in open in the moonlight with those earthquake hats, blending their voices. God, such music, Ben, heard as a boy, cross Ringabella Haven, Moon Carol. Sour pipe removed, he held a shield of hand beside his lips that cooed a moonlight night call, clear from a near, a call from afar, replying. Down the edge of his freeman baton ranged Bloom's your other eye, scanning for... Where did I see that? Callan, Coleman, Dignam, Patrick. Hey ho, hey ho. Fawcett. Ah, just I was looking. Hope he's not looking cute as a rat. He held unfurled his freeman. Can't see now. Remember right Greek ease. Bloom dipped. Bloomer. Dear sir. Dear Henry wrote. Dear Maddie. Got your let and flow. Hell did I put. Some pockerath. It is utter impos. Underline impos. To write today. Bore this. Bored Bloom tambourine gently with I am just reflecting fingers on flat pad Pat brought. On. Know what I mean? No. Change that E. Accept my poor little prez and close. Ask her no ants. Hold on. Five. Dig. Two about here. Penny the gulls. Elijah is come. Seven. Davy Burns. Is eight about, say, half a crown. My poor little prez, P.O. two and six, write me along. Do you despise? Jingle, have you the... So excited. Why do you call me naught? You naughty too? Oh, Mary lost the pin of her. Bye for today. Yes, yes, we'll tell you. Want to, to keep it up. Call me that other... Other world, she wrote. My patience are exhaust. To keep it up, you must believe, believe. The tank, it is true. Folly am I writing. Husbands don't. That's marriage does their wives, because I'm away from. Suppose. But how? She must keep young. If she found out... Card in my high grade, ha? Huh? No, not tell all. Useless pain. If they don't see. Woman. Source for the gander. A hackney car, number 324. Driver Barton James of number one Harmony Avenue, Donnybrook. On which sat a fair. A young gentleman, stylishly dressed in an indigo blue serge suit, made by George Robert Messius, tailor and cutter of number five Eden Key, and wearing a straw hat, very dressy, bought of John Plasto of number one Great Brunswick Street, Hatter. Eh? This is the jingle that joggled and jingled. By Glugat's pork shop, bright tubes of Agendath, trotted a gallant buttocked mare. Answering an ad? Keen Richie's eyes asked Bloom. Yes, Mr. Bloom said. Town traveller. Nothing doing, I expect. Bloom, the uh... Best... References. But Henry wrote... It will excite me. You know now, in haste, Henry. Greek E. Better add postscript. What is he playing now? Improvising. Intermezzo. P.S. The rum-tum-tum. How will you pun? You punish me. Crooked skirt swinging, whack by. Tell me, I want to... No. 
Oh, of course if I didn't I wouldn't ask. La 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 ri. Trails off there sad in minor. Why minor sad? Sign, H. They like sad tail at end. P P S. La 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 ri. I feel so sad today. La ri. So lonely. D. He blotted quick on pad of pat. Envel address. Just copy out of paper. Murmured. Messrs. Callan, Coleman and Co. Limited. Henry wrote. Miss Martha Clifford, care P. O. Dolphins Barn Lane, Dublin. Blot over the other, so he can't read. Right. Idea. Prize. Titbit. Something detective read off blotting pad. Payment at the rate of guinea per call. Matcham often thinks the laughing witch. Poor Mrs. Purefoy. U P up. Too poetical that about the sad. Music did that. Music hath charms. Shakespeare said quotations every day of the year. To be or not to be. Wisdom while you wait. In Gerard's rosary of Fetter Lane he walks. Great Auburn. One life is all. One body. Do, but. Do. Done, anyhow. Postal order, stamp. Post office lower down. Walk now. Enough. Barney Kiernan's, I promised to meet them. Dislike that job, house of mourning. Walk. Pat? Doesn't hear. Deaf beetle he is. Car, near there now. Talk, talk. Pat? Doesn't. Settling those napkins. Lot of ground he must cover in the day. Paint face behind on him, then he'd be too. Wish they'd sing more. Keep my mind off. Bald Pat, who is bothered, mitered the napkins. Pat is a waiter hard of his hearing. Pat is a waiter who waits while you wait. He, 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 he. He waits while you wait. He, he. A waiter is he. He, 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 he. He waits while you wait. While you wait, if you wait, he will wait while you wait. He 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 he. Oh, wait while you wait. Deuce now, deuce, Lydia, bronze and rose. She had a gorgeous, simply gorgeous time. And look at the lovely shell she brought. To the end of the bar, to him, she bore lightly the spiked and winding sea horn that he, George Lidwell, solicitor, might hear. Listen. She bade him. Under Tom Kernan's gin-hot words, the accompanist wove music slow. Authentic fact, how Walter Bapti lost his voice. Well, sir, the husband took him by the throat. Scoundrel, said he, you'll sing no more love songs. He did, Sir Tom. Bob Cowley wove. Tenors get wind. Cowley lay back. Ah, now he heard, she holding it to his ear. Here, he heard. Wonderful. She held it to her own, and through the sifted light pale gold in contrast glided to hear. Tap. Bloom, through the bar door, saw a shell held at their ears. He heard more faintly that that they heard, each for herself alone, then each for other, hearing the plash of waves loudly, a silent roar. Bronze by a weary gold, a near, a far. They listened. Her ear, too, is a shell. The peeping lobe there. Been to the seaside. Lovely seaside girls. Skin tanned raw. Should have put on cold cream first, make it brown. Butter toast. Oh, and that lotion mustn't forget. Fever near her mouth. Your head did simply. Hair braided over. Shell with seaweed. Why do they hide their ears with seaweed hair? And Turks their mouth. Why? Her eyes over the sheet, a yashmak. Find the way in, a cave. No admittance except on business. The sea, they think they hear, singing, a roar. The blood, is it? Souse in the ear sometimes. Well, it's a sea. Corpus Islands. Wonderful, really. So distinct. Again. George Lidwell held its murmur, hearing... Then laid it by gently. What are the wild waves saying? He asked her, smiled. Charming, sea-smiling and unanswering, Lydia on Lidwell smiled. Tap. 
by Larry O'Rourke's, by Larry, bold Larry O, boil and swayed and boil and turned. From the forsaken shell, Miss Mina glided to her tankard, waiting. No, she was not so lonely, archly, Miss Deuce's head let Mr. Lidwell know. Walks in the moonlight by the sea. No, not alone. With whom? She nobly answered, with a gentleman friend. Bob Cowley's twinkling fingers in the treble played again. The landlord has the prior. A little time. Long John. Big Ben. Lightly he played a light, bright, tinkling measure for tripping ladies, arch and smiling, and for their gallants, gentlemen friends. One, 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 two, one, three, four. Sea, wind, leaves, thunder, waters, cows lowing, the cattle market, cocks, hens don't crow, snakes hiss. There's music everywhere. Rutledge's door, e creaking. No, that's noise. Minuet of Don Giovanni he's playing now. Court dresses of all descriptions in castle chambers dancing. Misery, peasants outside, green starving faces eating dock leaves. Nice, that is. Look, 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 look. You look at us. That's joyful, I can feel. Never have written it. Why? My joy is other joy, but both are joys. Yes, joy it must be. Mere fact of music shows you her. Often thought she was in the dumps till she began to lilt. Then, no. McCoy, Valise, my wife and your wife, squealing cat, like tearing silk, tongue when she talks like the clapper of a bellows. They can't manage men's intervals. Gap in their voices, too. Fill me, I'm warm, dark, open. Molly, in quis est homo, mercadante, my ear against the wall to hear. Want a woman who can deliver the goods. Jog, jig, jog, stopped. Dandy tan shoe of dandy boiling, socks sky blue, clocks came light to earth. Oh, look, we are so. Chamber music. Could make a kind of pun on that. It is a kind of music I often thought when she... Acoustics, that is. Tinkling. Empty vessels make most noise. Because the acoustics, the resonance changes according as the weight of the water is equal to the law of falling water. Like those rhapsodies of lists, Hungarian, gypsy-eyed. Pearls, drops, rain. diddle iddle addle addle oodle oodle hiss Now... Maybe now, before. One rapped on a door, one tapped with a knock. Did he knock, Paul de Cock, with a loud, proud knocker, with a cock, cara, 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 cock, cock, cock. Tap. Qui stagno, Ben? Said Father Cowley. No, Ben. Tom Kernan interfered. The croppy boy, our native Doric. I do, Ben. Mr. Dedalus said. Good men and true. Do, do. They begged in one. I'll go. Here, Pat, return. Come. He came, he came. He did not stay. To me. How much? What key? Six sharps? F sharp major. Ben Dollard said. Bob Cowley's outstretched talons gripped the black, deep-sounding chords. Must go. Prince Bloom told Richie, Prince. No. Richie said. Yes, must. Got money somewhere. He's on for a razzle back egg spree. Much? He see here's lip speech. One and nine. Penny for yourself. Here, give him two pence tip. Deaf, bothered. But perhaps he has wife and family waiting. Waiting, Patty come home. He, 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 he. Deaf, wait while they wait. But wait, but here. Chords dark, lugugugubrious. Low, in a cave of the dark middle earth, embedded ore. Lump music. The voice of dark age, of unlove, earth's fatigue made grave approach, and painful came from afar, from hoary mountains, called on good men and true. The priest he sought, with him would he speak a word. Tap. Ben Dollard's voice, barrel tone. 
doing his level best to say it. Croak, a vast, manless, moonless, womoonless marsh. Other come down. Big ship's channelers business he did once. Remember Rosany ropes, ship's lanterns. Failed to the tune of ten thousand pounds, now in the ivy home, cubicle number so-and-so. Number one bass did that for him. The priest's at home. A false priest's servant bade him welcome. Step in. The Holy Father. Curlicues, of course. Ruin them. Wreck their lives. Then build them cubicles to end their days in. hush lullaby. Die, dog. Little dog, die. The voice of warning, solemn warning, told them the youth had entered a lonely hall, told them how solemn fell his footstep there, told them the gloomy chamber, the vested priest, sitting to shrive. Decent soul. Bit addled now. Thinks he'll win in answers. Poet's picture puzzle. We hand you crisp five-pound note. Bird sitting hatching in the nest. Lay of the last minstrel he thought it was. See, blank, T, what domestic animal? T-R, most courageous mariner. Good voice he has still. No eunuch yet with all his belongings. Listen. Bloom listened. Richie Goulding listened. And by the door, deaf Pat, bald Pat, tipped Pat listened. The chords harped slower. The voice of penance and of grief came slow, embellished, tremulous. Ben's contrite beard confessed, in nomine domine, in God's name. He knelt, he beat his hand upon his breast, confessing, mea culpa. Latin again, that holds them like bird lime. Priest with the communion corpus for those women. Chap in the mortuary, coffin or coffee. Corpus nomine. Wonder where that rat is by now. Scrape. Tap. They listened. Tankards and Miss Kennedy, George Lidwell, eyelid well expressive, full busted satin, Kernan, sigh. The sighing voice of sorrow sang. His sins. Since Easter he had cursed three times. You bitches bast. And once at mass time he had gone to play. Once by the churchyard he had passed, and for his mother's rest he had not prayed. A boy, a croppy boy. Bronze, listening by the beer pool, gazed far away, soulfully. Doesn't have no I'm. Molly, great dab at seeing anyone looking. Bronze gazed far sideways. Mirror there. Is that best side of her face? They always know. Knock at the door, last tip to tit of it. Cock, cara, cara. What do they think when they hear music? Way to catch rattlesnakes. Night Michael Gunn gave us the box. Tuning up. Shaf Persia liked that best. Remind him of home sweet home. Wiped his nose in curtain too. Custom his country perhaps. That's music too. Not as bad as it sounds. Tootling. Brasses. Braying asses through up trunks. Double basses. Helpless. Gashes in their sides. Woodwinds. Mooing cows. Semi-grand open. Crocodile music hath jaws. Woodwind. Like Goodwin's name. She looked fine. A crocus dress she wore. Low-cut belongings on show. Clove. Her breath was always in theatre when she bent to ask a question. Told her what Spinoza says in that book of poor papas. Hypnotised, listening. Eyes like that. She bent. Chap in dress circle staring down into her with his opera glass for all he was worth. Beauty of music you must hear twice. Nature, woman, half a look. God made the country, man the tune. Met him pike hoses. Philosophy. Oh, rocks. All gone, all fallen. At the siege of Russ, his father. At Gory, all his brothers fell. To Wexford. We are the boys of Wexford. He would. Last of his name and race. I, too... Last my race. Millie, young student. Well, my fault, perhaps. No son. Rudy. Too late now. Or if not. If not. If still. He bore no hate. Hate, love, those are names. Rudy. Soon I'm old. Big Ben, his voice unfolded. 
great voice, Richie Goulding said, a flush struggling in his pale, to bloom, soon old, but when was young. Ireland comes now, my country above the king. She listens. Who fears to speak of 1904? Time to be shoving. Looked enough. Dollard the croppy cried. Bless me and let me go. Tap. Bloom looked unblessed to go. Got up to kill on 18 bob a week. Fellow shut out the tips. Want to keep your weather eye open. Those girls, those lovely. By the sad sea waves. Chorus girls romance. Letters read out for breach of promise. From Chickabiddy's own mumsy pum. Laughter in court. Henry, I never signed it. The lovely name you. Lo, sank the music, air and words, then hastened. The false priest, rustling soldier from his cassock, a yeoman captain. They know it all by heart, the thrill they itch for, yeoman cap. Tap, tap. Thrilled, she listened, bending in sympathy to hear. Blank face, virgin should say, or finger only. Write something on it, page. If not, what becomes of them? Decline, despair. Keeps them young. Even admire themselves. See, play on her. Lip blow. Body of white woman, a flute alive. Blow, gentle, loud. Three holes, all women. Goddess I didn't see. They want it. Not too much polite. That's why he gets them. Gold in your pocket, brass in your face. With look to look, songs without words. Molly, that hurdy-gurdy boy, she knew he meant the monkey was sick. Or because so like the Spanish. Understand animals, too, that way. Solomon did. Gift of nature. Ventriloquize, my lips closed. Think in my stum. What? Will you? I want... You, too. With hoarse, rude fury, the yeoman cursed, swelling in apoplectic bitches bastard. A good thought, boy, to come. One hour's your time to live your last. Tap, tap. Thrill now, pity they feel, to wipe away a tear for martyrs, for all things dying, want to, dying to, die. For that all things born... Poor Mrs. Purifoy. Hope she's over. Because they're wombs. A liquid of womb, of woman. Eyeball gazed under a fence of lashes. Calmly, hearing. See real beauty of the eye when she not speaks. On yonder river. At each slow, satiny, heaving bosom's wave. Her heaving emboire. Red rose, rose slowly, sank red rose. Heart beats her breath. Breath, that is life. And all the tiny, tiny fern foils trembled of maiden hair. But look, the bright stars fade, O oh, rose, Castile, the morn. Ah, Lidwell, for him then, not for infatuated. I like that. See her from here, though. Popped corks, splashes of beer froth, stacks of empties. On the smooth, jutting beer pool laid Lydia a hand, lightly, plumply. Leave it to my hands. All lost in pity for Croppy. Fro to, to fro over the polished knob. She knows his eyes, my eyes, her eyes. Her thumb and finger passed in pity. Passed, repassed, and gently touching, then slid so smoothly, slowly down... A cool, firm, white enamel baton protruding through their sliding ring. With a cock, with a cara. Tap, tap, tap. I hold this house, amen, he gnashed in fury. Traitors swing. The chords consented. Very sad thing, but had to be. Get out before the end. Uh, thanks, uh, that was heavenly. Where's my hat? Pass by her. Can leave that freeman. Letter I have. Suppose she worthy. No. Walk, walk, walk. Like Cashel, Boyle, O'Connor, O'Coyle, O'Tisdall, Morris, Tisntal, Farrell. Walk. 
Well, I must be... Are you off? Yeah, must be, yes. Blooms up. All right, high blue. Bloom stood up. Oh, soap feeling rather sticky behind. Must have sweated. Music. That lotion, remember. Well, so long. High grade. Card inside, yes. By deaf pat in the doorway, straining ear, Bloom passed. At Geneva Barrack that young man died. At passage was his body laid. Dolor, oh, he dolor is. The voice of the mournful chanter called to dolorous prayer. By rose, by satiny bosom, by the fondling hand, by slops, by empties, by popped corks, greeting in going, past eyes and maiden hair, bronze and faint gold. In deep sea shadow went bloom, soft bloom, I feel so lonely bloom. Tap, tap, tap. Pray for him, prayed the base of Dollard. You who hear in peace, breathe a prayer, drop a tear. Good men, good people, he was the croppy boy. Scaring eavesdropping boots, croppy boots boy. Bloom in the almond hallway heard growls and roars of bravo. Fat back slapping, their boots all treading. Boots, not the boots the boy. General called us off full of swill to wash it down. Glad I avoid it. Come on, Ben, Simon Dedala said. By God, you're as good as ever you were. Better, said Tom Jim Kernan. Most trenchant rendition of that ballad, upon my soul and honour it is. Lablash, said Father Cowley. Ben Dollard bulkily catucha towards the bar, mightily praise-fed, and all big, roseate, on heavy-footed feet, his gouty fingers knackering castanets in the air. Big ben ben Dollard. Big Ben-Ben. Big Ben-Ben. And deep moved all, Simon trumping compassion from Foghorn Nose, all laughing. They brought him forth, Ben Dollard, in right good cheer. You're looking rubicon, George Lidwell said. Miss Deuce composed her rose to wait. Ben McCree, said Mr. Dedalus, clapping Ben's fat back shoulder blade. Fit to the fiddle, only he has a lot of adipose tissue concealed about his person. <laughs> fat of death, Simon, Ben Dollard growled. Richie, rift in the lute, alone sat. Goulding, Collis, Ward. Uncertainly he waited. Unpaid Pat, too. Tap, 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 tap. Miss Mina Kennedy brought near her lips to ear of Tankard One. Mr. Dollard. They murmured low. Dollard? Murmured Tankard. Tank One believed, Miss Ken, when she... That doll he was. She, doll, the tank... He murmured that he knew the name. The name was familiar to him, that is to say. That was to say he had heard the name of Dollard, was it? Dollard, yes. Yes, her lips said more loudly, Mr. Dollard. He sang that song lovely, murmured Mina. And the last rose of summer was a lovely song. Mina loved that song. Tankard loved the song that Mina. Tis the last rose of summer, Dollard left bloom, felt wind wound round inside. Gassy thing, that cider. Binding, too. Wait. Post office near Reuben Jay's. One and eightpence, too. Get shut of it. Dodge round by Greek Street. Wish I hadn't promised to meet. Freer in air. Music gets on your nerves. Beer pool. Her hand that rocks the cradle rules the... Ben Hoth. That rules the world. Far, far. Far, far. Tap, 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 tap. Up the quay went Lionel Leopold, naughty Henry with letter for Maddy, with sweets of sin, with frillies for Raoul, with met him pike hoses, went Poldy on. Tap, blind, walked tapping by the tap, the curbstone tapping, tap by tap. Cowley, he stunts himself with it, kind of drunkenness. Better give way only halfway, the way of a man with a maid. Instance, enthusiasts, all ears, not lose a demi-semi-quaver, eyes shut, head nodding in time. Dotty, you daren't budge, thinking strictly prohibited. Always talking shop, fiddle-faddle about notes. All a kind of attempt to talk. Unpleasant when it stops, because you never know exact. Organ in Gardiner Street, old Glynn, fifty quid a year. Queer, up there in the cockloft alone with stops and locks and keys, seated all day at the organ, mourned on for hours, talking to himself or the other fellow blowing the bellows. 
growl angrily, then shriek, cursing. I want to have wadding or something in his. No, don't, she cried. Then, all of a soft, sudden, wee little, wee little, pippy wind. Wee, a wee little wind piped e in Bloom's little wee. Was he? Mr. Dedalus said, returning with fetched pipe. I was with him this morning at poor little Paddy Dignam's... Aye, the Lord of mercy on him. Uh, by the by, there's a tuning fork in there and the... Tap, 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 tap. Well, the wife has a fine voice, or a head, or what? Lidwell asked. Oh, that must be the tuner. Lydia said to Simon Lionel first I saw. Forgot it when he was here. Blind he was, she told George Lidwell, second I saw. And played so exquisitely, treat to hear. Exquisite contrast... Bronze lid, mina gold. Shout! Ben Dollard shouted, pouring. Sing out! You do! cried Father Cowley. I feel I want. Tap, 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 tap. Very, Mr. Dedalus said, staring hard at a headless sardine. Under the sandwich bell lay on a beer of bread one last, one lonely last sardine of summer, bloom alone. Very, he stared. The law register for choice. Tap, 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 tap. Bloom went by berries. Wish I could. Wait, that wonder worker if I had. Twenty-four solicitors in that one house. Litigation. Love one another. Piles of parchment. Messrs. Pick and Pocket have power of attorney. Goulding Collis Ward. But, for example, the chap that wallops the big drum... His vocation, Mickey Rooney's band. Wonder how it first struck him. Sitting at home after pig's cheek and cabbage, nursing it in the armchair, rehearsing his band part, pom, pompity. Jolly for the wife. Asses skins. Welt them through life, then wallop after death. Pom, wallop. Seems to be what you call yashmak, or I mean kismet, fate. Tap, tap. A stripling, blind, with a tapping cane, came tap, tap, tapping by Daly's window, where a mermaid... Hair all streaming, but he couldn't see. Blue whiffs of a mermaid, blind couldn't. Mermaid, coolest whiff of all. Instruments. A blade of grass, shell of her hands, then blow. Even comb and tissue paper you can knock a tune out of. Molly, in her shift in Lombard Street West, hair down. I suppose each kind of trade made its own, don't you see? Hunter with a horn. Haw, have you the... Clush, sonilla. Shepherd his pipe. Policeman a whistle, locks and keys. Sweep, four o'clock, all's well, sleep. All is lost now. Drum? Pompity. Wait, I know. Town crier, bum bailiff. Long John, waken the dead. Pom. Dignum. Poor little nominee, dominee. Pom. It is music. I mean, of course, it's all pom, pom, pom. Very much what they call da capo. Still, you can hear... As we march, we march along, march along, pom. I must really... <clears throat> now, if I did that at a banquet, just a question of custom, Shah of Persia. Breathe a prayer, drop a tear. All the same, he must have been a bit of a natural not to see it was a yeoman cap, muffled up. Wonder who was that chap at the grave in the brown mackin? Oh, the whore of the lane. A frowsy whore with black straw sailor hat askew came lazily in the day along the quay towards Mr. Bloom. When first he saw that form endearing, yes, it is, I feel so lonely. Wet night in the lane, horn. Who had the... He whore, she saw. Off her beat here. What is she? Hope she. Psst! Any chance of your wash? New Molly had me decked. Stout lady does be with you in the brown costume. Put you off your stroke. That appointment we made, knowing we'd never, well, hardly ever. Too dear, too near to home, sweet home. Sees me, does she? Looks a fright in the day. Face like dip, dammer. Oh, well, she has to live like the rest. Look in here. In Lionel Mark's antique sale shop window, haughty Henry Lionel Leopold, dear Henry Flower, Earnestly, Mr. Leopold Bloom envisaged candlestick, melodeon, oozing maggoty blow bags. Bargain, six bob. Might learn to play. Cheap. Let her pass. 
Of course, everything is dear if you don't want it. That's what good salesman is. Make you buy what he wants to sell. Chap sold me the Swedish razor he shaved me with. Wanted to charge me for the edge he gave it. She's passing now. Six, Bob. Must be the cider, or perhaps the burgund. Near bronze from a near, near gold from afar, they chinked their clinking glasses, all bright-eyed and gallant, before bronze Lydia's tempting last rose of summer, rose of Castile. First lid, de, cow, cur, doll, the fifth. Lidwell, Cy Dedalus, Bob Cowley, Kernan, and Big Ben Dollard. Tap, a youth entered a lonely Ormond Hall. Bloom viewed a gallant-pictured hero in Lionel Mark's window. Robert Emmett's last words. Seven last words. Of mayor beer, that is. Roman like you, man. Aye, aye, Ben. Will lift your glass with us. They lifted. Chink. Chunk. Tip. An unseeing stripling stood in the door. He saw not bronze. He saw not gold. Nor Ben, nor Bob, nor Tom, nor Cy, nor George, nor Tanks, nor Richie, nor Pat. He, 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 he did not see. Sea Bloom, Creesa Bloom, viewed last words, softly. When my country takes her place among... <coughs> must be the burr. <coughs> oh, <coughs> nations of the earth. No one behind. She's passed. Then and not till then. Tram. Cran, cran, cran. Good opera. Coming. Crandle, cran, cran. I'm sure it's the Burgund. Yes. One, two. Let my epitaph be Cara. <laughs> Written. I have... Done.